We're not in Texas anymore. We have a few things to update you on since we've returned to Wisconsin. Like why we're in Illinois right now. <laughs> a little bit on how I'm doing with uh, my hair. No, how I'm doing with, with recovery from the surgery and also from radiation, which I think is causing more problems than they said it would. I don't know. Let's go down that road. So things really have cleared out since we got here. All these sites are all empty now. Most people left as a Sunday. Work tomorrow. Nice place though. I have some sites down here. Um, it's, it's a little inlet on this lake. A lot of trails which we did not go on because there were lots of mosquitoes. So we pretty much just walked along all the campgrounds and all the, that were connected to each other. It's a fairly good sized lake. No swimming but they had a lot of people kayaking and canoeing. There. That's a fairly good sized lake. Yep. Oh, somebody's fishing or they forgot their pole. Maybe. Oh. Oh. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. And I'm Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Six months with no hills, and now we're in northern Illinois where there are hills. Yes. And, yeah, I was kind of surprised. If, why am I so tired? Oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> you turn around, you look back, you see the hill. Uh, yeah. We have been back in Wisconsin for about two and a half weeks. And in that two and a half weeks, we started out at Gary's mom's for a few days. And while we were there, we went to, uh, I went to a chiropractor, which is about 45 minutes away from there. And then we decided to, to look around a town of where we might want to have a base home someday. Might be sooner than later. Might be years from now, we don't know. We're really kind of going through a what if thing right now. And so we did that and then we, we moved down by our youngest daughter, and then we went to another town not too far from there, another town that we really liked that maybe we would might want to settle in someday. And then we went back to our by our youngest daughter, and then we went to Illinois, right? Yep. We moved five times, five times in two and a half weeks. Actually, five times in two weeks. And then we got to this campground here in northern Illinois because we went to go visit a friend of ours in uh, Freeport, Illinois, where Gary served a church for five years. And she's 99 years old, young, 99 years, 99 years young, but she's going through a lot of things right now and she's been wanting us to come and see her, so we did that. And then we'll be heading back to where his mom lives this week and stay put for a while, I think. Yep. So, the last time we talked to you, um, I had to go back to Houston for my last treatment of radiation. And then they said I was good to go. And I shouldn't have any side effects or anything. So let's back up. For those of you who are new, welcome to our channel. And for those of you who have been following us for a while, we're going to catch you up on a few things. There's our home. Can you spot it? <laughs> right there. We're the only ones with a red door here in the whole park. And nobody has shutters either. All right, for those of you who are new, the um, Gary is a retired pastor fills in churches. We usually go south for the winter. 
we have uh, ties, a lot of ties in Wisconsin. That's our legal address. And uh, Butch is just Gary's mom's. <laughs> and we uh, travel to different places where they have churches that are in need. And it's usually in the winter time in a warmer climate. This last winter we were in Corpus Christi. Wonderful, wonderful weather. But while I was there, I found out that I had endometrial carcinoma. That's a, a tumor, a cancerous tumor in the uterus. So we went from Corpus Christi, the end of May, close to the end of May, moved over to Houston where they have MD Anderson, the number one cancer center in America, just four hours away. And that's where I had my surgery. And then we had to wait five weeks until after the surgery to see if everything was healing okay. Um, I have a lot of videos on this that you can look and see what is endometrial carcinoma. You can see, uh, you can watch, you can watch um, all the things that I've been going through in my recovery. Uh, all that's up above. I have a playlist if you want to look at that. I'll put that at the end if you want to look at the playlist. So I had my fourth of five treatments in early July and we had to evacuate. We didn't have to, we chose to, and we're very glad we did because Hurricane Burl was coming. And so we evacuated to Tyler, Texas, about four hours away. And I had to go back for my last treatment. We did not take the RV with us that time. And um, some of these things have been on our Facebook page. So I don't know what, if I'm repeating myself in a video or if not. I don't think I've mentioned some of this in our videos. So we went back for that last treatment and they said, you're good to go. You can travel, you can do whatever. Well, if you've never traveled in an RV, especially a pickup that's towing your home, it's not as ride, smooth a ride as a car or a van or a motorhome. It's a little rougher than that. Well, plus the stress of wondering what's all bouncing around where in the RV as you go over the bridges and the various potholes along the way at 60 miles an hour. Yeah, we're, we aren't even going the speed limit because it's yeah. just too rough to do that. And looking for places to stay, dodging storms along the way, there was one day that we were looking of where to go and we thought St. Louis would be the safer place to go towards and on our way there we couldn't find anything where we wanted to go there weren't either they didn't have campgrounds there or whatever that part of Illinois was very sparse for campgrounds uh, the north the south, northern part southern part no problem but the middle part was kind of a where we were they didn't have anything well along the Mississippi there were spots but that, that was, was very full. <laughs> and it was too far over from yeah. where we wanted to be. Anyway, we ended up going back to a place that we had been to previously to earlier in the day. And it was about, so it was about two hour round trip of that. But we found out the next day that the part where we were trying to get a campground got hit really hard and uh, flash flooding and in fact a dam broke in a, a community that we had been looking at staying and they had to evacuate everybody out of the community so <laughs> thank you god mm. he's watching over us again anyway all the rough travel the stresses all those things and then i think we've been moving too much since we've been back we're looking at staying in one place now for about 10 days that's the plan. And not doing much traveling at all, just kind of sticking close to his mom's for a while. We haven't even seen all of our kids yet. Uh, we have one son that we haven't seen yet. That'll be about an hour to meet him. And we have some friends up in that area that we haven't seen yet. We have a lot of friends. And we do have one grandson that we haven't seen yet too. He's an older, he's 21 and we haven't been able to get together with him yet either. So it's just, but it'll still be fairly close to home. Okay, so the, the what's happening is, when I was around week four, 
even week five after the surgery, the hysterectomy. I mean, they took a lot. They took, they took the uterus with the tumor in it. They took the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, uh, six sentinel lymph nodes. They took, did I say everything? The cervix? They took a lot. And it was laparoscopically. The stitches never did bother me. Um, but I had a, a heaviness in my abdomen that has been coming and going. And I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It was getting much better by week four, week five. Then at week five is when I started my radiation. And I kept telling them how I was feeling that by the evening of, a, of one of my treatments and then the next day, how I'd feel and then I'd have another treatment. Just about the time I was starting to feel a little better. And then I did it again. And then I was like, what's going on? And then I, I'd asked them about that and they said, no, that shouldn't be from the radiation. I had it done internally. It was brachytherapy. We're gonna turn around here because we have more people. So we're just gonna go this way now for a while. And so there was nothing really, supposedly, nothing that should be affecting anything, they said. That it was still from the surgery. I don't know. But I'm now 10 weeks post-surgery, three weeks post having radiation, and I'm still having this really heavy feeling in my abdomen. It's achy. It's not a pain. It just aches. And I feel just really bleh some days. So that's one of the reasons we haven't done a video in a while because I just haven't felt up to it. Um, walking seems to help as long as I'm not doing a lot of heels. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, the other thing that's been going on is I have had this really dry, dry, dry thing going on with my eyes. Not in my eyes, but around my eyes. And it's all puffy and wrinkly and just, um, yeah. They're not, that's not my normal way. And I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know what's causing it. But that's all been since my surgery. So I don't know if that has something to do with uh, the surgery, if I still had some hormones that were working that uh, are no longer there to produce anything. I don't know. The doctors don't think so. <sighs> but it's kind of a coincidence that it all happened after my surgery. And then it's gotten worse. Um, and I don't know if it's worse because of the radiation or if I forgot my selfie stick and my hand is killing me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's because of the radiation or if it's still the surgery. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I still like to have my pillow that I, I, I kind of hug a pillow at night against my belly and that seems to help a little bit. Um, it probably did not help that I would have been about nine, nine weeks past my surgery when I was holding my grandson, youngest grandson, one of the two, they're, they're twins, and I, he was actually the older of the two, but 18 months old, 22 pounds, and I'd been holding him for a while because they were doing landscaping outside and he wanted to be by his mama but <laughs> mama wanted to get those plants taken care of and planted because they had to go back to work the next day and she wanted to get those taken care of so I was holding him and enjoying I loved it <laughs> because he doesn't go to very many people but he was heavy and I should have sat down I don't know why I didn't sit down it was so dumb and then finally I just dawned on me oh gosh well I was trying to stay close to his mom that's why he was okay with me, because I was staying close to his mom. But um, yeah, I was trying to do that, and uh, I think I maybe overdid that. That probably didn't help any. But that was a week ago, and I'm still feeling that feeling. 
So I mentioned early earlier in the video here that we've been looking at different places and uh, we've been zeroing in on a couple of towns that are close to our Wisconsin kids. We have one daughter that's out in British Columbia, Canada. So the closest place we could live there would be Washington State. And uh, not a place for us to retire in. So we're looking at places in Wisconsin that won't be too far from our kids. And we've zeroed in on two now. And we found the most wonderful apartment. Hmm. It was like a townhouse. It was on one level, had a garage, an attached garage, had a washer and dryer in the unit. It was all on one level, had a patio out in the back. It was a neighborhood, a community. Oh my gosh, it was perfect. No openings. Hmm. <laughs> no openings, and I have to keep checking the website to see if anything opens up. But most, we're not the only ones who think it's a really neat place to live. They stopped advertising <laughs> because they were getting such a long waiting list. I guess that's a sign it's a good place. Um, yeah, and so many things are included in the rent, it's unbelievable. We are not in a position to buy, and it's certainly not now with the, account, the economy the way it is. So there's no way we're going to be able to buy anything. And so we're... Well, there's a few more reasons than just the uh, cost of buying. That's true. We've Here's been thinking. The idea of owning property and then having to keep it up and take care of it and improve it, and the costs of house repairs and et cetera, and all the other things that you don't consider when yeah. thinking about purchasing a place. And you're thinking, well, gosh, don't you have those, those things with your RV? Well, yeah, but it's a whole lot smaller scale <laughs> and a lot, lot less money, no lawn to mow. Considering yeah. renting a place, the advantages are we don't have to have a big cash outlay to get into it, and we don't have to do a whole lot of maintenance outside. We can leave it for a time, not have to worry about yard and sidewalks and things. Which leads us to the other thing we've been thinking about, and that is... There's so many places we haven't had been able to travel to, and you know we serve churches in the winter time, vacancies in the winter time, and that's been wonderful. But when you're hauling an RV, that's a long haul to go to some of these places. Corpus Christi was way down there, and and it's just along the way there are places we stop and like to see having a RV with truck and travel or uh, fifth wheel, it's harder to pull into waysides and sites that we wanted to visit just because of parking requirements. Mm -hmm. We really don't want to graduate to a motorhome, which would be more comfortable for travel. There's a reason that a lot of retired people <laughs> are in motorhomes. Because of the motorhome, then you have to have another kind of in, uh, another form of uh, transportation while you're stationary. So then you're gonna have a tow. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so many, so many changes. That would be a big change. So we're thinking a little smaller. Some of our more vivid memories before we started living full-time RV was when we had a van. And it was just basically a, it was just a, a van. Oh my gosh, holy cow, he's a big one. That is a big turkey. Oh, and there's another one. Hello. You better start running because Thanksgiving will be coming up anytime, you know. <laughs> they also have equestrian trails through here and uh, bike trails and things too. So, yeah, oh, hello there. Yesterday we saw about what, 30 of them in one. one. What, is it, what is it called when you have a lot of turkeys together? Is that a flock? Is that a gaggle? Is that a what is that? Oh my goodness, there's more over there across the road. Hello. Hi, hello. <laughs> Sorry for that little diversion there. That was that was kind of cool. 
<laughs> we haven't seen any deer. We've seen deer prints in the in the in the mud and stuff, but we haven't seen any deer. Anyway, so we're thinking, you know, we used to have this van and it was just a glorified tent on wheels. It was a conversion van. You could almost stand up in it, but not quite. And we just took the two middle seats out and we put the back one down with a mattress on it, a, a foam mattress on it. And we traveled in that all over out west. We had such a great time with that and you could just go anywhere with it. It was small. And I know if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that we've been talking about this off and on for a while. I think somebody's trying to tell us something. Mm. So what our thought is, you know, we've never been to the East Coast. We haven't been there yet. There's a lot of places we haven't been able to go. So we're thinking maybe taking, oh gosh, I hate the thought of selling her. Uh, we're thinking about maybe getting an apartment and then we would travel for like a month at a time, just a month at a time. And then come back for a month or so, or maybe a couple months, have a, a holiday or two with the kids and, and then leave again. And that's been a big thought for us and not do, uh, if we not serve a church permanently, but, or, or even like the part time we've been doing between two and a half to six months, anywhere in there during the winter. Maybe just doing Sundays here and there as needed. We will see. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things we could do. There's so many vacancies, and uh, they're always looking for somebody to fill in on a Sunday. So that's another idea. And there's other ways to make money on the road if we wanted to do that. But we thought maybe it might be fun just to just to travel and do what we want to do. We're always kind of between family friends and then traveling seeing family friends on our way to the next church that's kind of been our pattern and there's a lot of things we're missing because our time is limited in between and we always kind of have to get there in a hurry I'm supposed to go back to Houston for a, an exam in October I'm gonna see if they can push that to the end of October Right now they have me scheduled for the beginning. Ah. We just have so many things on our, are in our minds. You know, we are not ready to get off completely. Mm. We're just not. And I could learn to drive the truck with the RV behind it. Other she women do it. enough already just get, <laughs> watching me drive and making sure I do it properly. <laughs> Other women have done it. I could do it if I put my mind to it. But when I have, I, okay, let's put it this way. I'm Gary's second set of eyes when we're, when we're driving. And when I have driven a couple of times, he forgets to tell me where to turn and things like that. And it's like, okay, you're fired. So we have found our strength is that Gary is a good driver and I am a navigator. And that's kind of where we're, we've been staying. Uh, Right now, I wouldn't be able to do that. Hauling an RV behind the truck and and the weight and everything. You feel it when you're going down the road. And we don't have a big unit. We're only 26 foot. We have no slide outs. Um, it's not a real heavy, big RV. But you can still feel it when, when you're towing. And there I don't are know. things that I do have to do that would be more challenging for Orlean uh, physically, especially now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a little out of shape. I have, the furthest I've walked so far since my surgery has been three miles in one day, one at one time. There's been other ones where I've done short walks here and there, but um, three, three miles was the big one. And here, since we've been at this park, we've done a couple miles each day. Right? Close to. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, if I was feeling myself again, we probably wouldn't even be thinking about some of this stuff. But the other side of the coin is, or the other, the other consideration is, 
There's a whole lot of weird things going on in our country. Things that we didn't have to deal with when we first started. And I don't, I don't want to discourage anybody from going full-time RV or uh, traveling. But things have changed, especially since COVID. Um, you know, you, you used to be able to go into a campground and just call ahead and just say, hey, do you have any openings tonight? And they say, sure, come on in. Even at the state parks or national parks, any place. We didn't have to have reservations in advance. Now you do. Now it has to be done online. And there's a fee for that. <laughs> Five dollar fee. At some places, in some place, I don't know, is it, has that ever been more than five? We are not that big. <laughs> that is a big one. As far as I'm, I'm feeling, uh, the, the physical part right now, I wouldn't be able to do the drive. When they told me, you're not going to have any problems driving, going back to Wisconsin, there's yeah, no issues. Well, they obviously have never been in a truck that hauling an RV. It took us six days to get back, and that was really pacing ourselves, trying to get out and walk each day, a little bit on the travel. Ending early, like about three o'clock in the afternoon, not leaving until like 11 or noon. Just, the maximum you know. distance, I think, was 200 miles in a day. Yeah. Usually around 100, 150. Yeah, we just really tried to keep that to a minimum. But the whole idea behind going into something smaller would be so that I could comfortably drive it. That was a big part of it. And that would that would divide up our, our time for driving and whatever too. That would be easier on Gary and It'd be good for me to remember how to drive, <laughs> in case I needed to. <laughs> we were just trying to think of, we're doing this totally unscripted, I'm sorry, I, this is off the cuff. Uh, we were just out walking, I pulled my phone out, we started talking. That's never happened before, by the way. Those are some of our better watched <laughs> videos, the ones that don't have the scripted and, and the, the notes. Well, if there's anything we forget, we'll either put it on Facebook or we'll put it in our next video. On rare occasions, she's uh, started talking and forgot to get the phone out and regretted it later, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for that. Yeah. yeah. No, you won't. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, what, what brought us to Illinois right now? is that one of the stops was to see our 99 year old friend and uh, it was getting hot and of course if we plug in to someone's house current you can't have your AC going it'll blow their fuses so we wanted to go someplace where we could plug in and a campsite a campground was our best choice so that's what we did and it kind of breaks up going back to Wisconsin it gave us three days in one place so that was a good thing too. And uh, we're just trying to ease up on some of the travel stuff a little bit. If you watched it so far to this point, thank you. We are on our way to back to his mom's and we'll be there for a while and just taking care of some things, business that we need to take care of, and more purging. We don't have much left, but there's still things we need to take care of. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna talk about some of the things we're doing diet-wise, and um, just things we've added that are, and little tips and things like that for, for my healing that may help you with your healing as well, no matter what kind of surgery you've had. And so these are just some things that we'll, uh, we'll share with you in a shorter video later. All right, until next time, God, God bless. bless.